We're on the air, my man. Let's do it. All right. Feels great to be back on the air, guys. Hey, good afternoon, everybody. Welcome, welcome, welcome. We got an cheers. awesome session lined up for you guys. Yeah, cheers. There it is. <laughs> we got a, a session lined up for you today. 12 websites worth copying. Uh, you know, as always, Chris and I are excited about bringing you guys a jam-packed session with a ton of takeaways, ton of ideas. You guys are going to leave with pages and pages of notes. Uh, and the reason we're talking about websites today is because most real estate agents right now, even in 2018, they treat their websites like glorified business cards and they don't really invest a lot of energy and effort into them. They typically download some type of template, maybe add their logo, add some graphics. That's sort of the extent of it. Now, if you're in a competitive market and you're losing out on deals to less talented, less experienced agents, it's because you're not getting in front of the consumer early enough in the process and you're not compelling them to actually want to hire you. Most marketers make the mistake thinking the website is just simply a marketing tool, but we a Curator know that your website is your best salesperson. So we couldn't be more excited to talk about how to improve your website to help you sell more. My name is Jimmy Mackin. I'm the co-founder Curator. I'm joined by my main man, best-selling author of the conversion, conversion Code, excuse me, Chris Smith. Chris, welcome to the call today, buddy. What's up, Jimmy? I'm excited to be here. Thank everybody for tuning in. If you're on Facebook Live, give us a thumbs up. Let us know in a comment where you're tuning in from. We want to make sure that the audio and the video is working properly. I got a new setup, Jimmy. I don't know if you saw it. Yeah, but I, I see it. I got a new setup. I'm loving it. But let me tell you why websites matter. Because the best leads come from your website. Mm -hmm. but websites matter because every lead is an internet lead. I don't care if you generate a Brian Buffini referral, they're going to go to Google. They're going to put your website in. And what I've found researching websites now for five to 10 years is that there's two kinds of sites, Jimmy, very simple. There are sites that earn you more business and sites that push business away. You either attract business through your site or you repel business because your website sucks. So the first pop quiz I want everyone to do, and I, I challenge people to do this at the seminars that I do, go to your website, go to your about page, go to your testimonials page, go to your sales page, go mm -hmm. to your home page, go to the pages we're going to cover today and ask yourself one simple question. If I didn't know me, if I was a stranger, if I didn't know how great I was, would I hire myself based on just my website? And if the answer is no, Jimmy, I want people laying in bed tonight, letting that bother them. I mm -hmm. want them to wake up tomorrow morning, letting it bother them. Cause our goal today is to teach people how to get more business from their website. But I just feel bad of all the people that are actually pushing business away. Yeah. Let, let me get your reaction to something real quickly here before we get into today's agenda. Why do you feel, you know, because I think people conceptually understand what you said there. Mm -hmm. They understand the importance of a website. They understand that they're losing business because their website isn't, you know, up to where it really, really needs to be. Why do you feel like most people either don't make the time or don't invest their resources in website design, in website optimization? I'm going to tell people the number one thing that they have to change. It's a mindset shift, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. The reason is because most people think of their websites as a noun and we think of a website as a verb. So people think of, oh, I got a website. No, you get a website and then you use a website. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> You don't have a website. You have a website and you use the website. So I would say, as soon as you can think of your site like a verb instead of like a noun, like you said, most websites are just a business card, you know, up on the internet. And, you know, your business card doesn't change that often either. I've seen them. You guys don't like changing those pictures on those business cards. So your website has to be an ecosystem. It has mm -hmm. to be a platform where there's new content. Look, Jimmy, here's a good example. Cause a lot of people watching, they know Zillow. Let me tell you how quickly Zillow's traffic would plummet if they stopped adding new content. Mm -hmm. if, if right now they didn't get another new listing for the next three months and they didn't publish another listicle about celebrity homes, right? If, 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 if Zillow stopped adding stuff to their site, it would go away pretty quickly. So just think of it that way. Now in real estate, you have the benefit that you automatically have listings going to your site. And that's why we're not gonna cover that today, Jimmy, because listings are a commodity. The mm -hmm. other stuff that is what makes you special. Yeah, I love that. And it's, it's 
it's, it's actually indicative of when you look at curator.com, we change our website, it feels like almost daily, making small changes. And it's, it's not like, it's not something that sort of drains us, it's something that we're excited about doing. So guys, today we're gonna walk through 12 pages worth copying. We're gonna go through the home page, the about page, the reviews page, and finally a sales page, which surprisingly many people still don't have on their real estate websites. We're gonna give you 12 examples, both in our industry and outside of our industry. But before we do that, I want to take the opportunity, Chris, and lay the groundwork here for some design principles that people should adhere to when they're thinking about designing these four core money pages and any sort of subsequent page there on after. Now, I put together sort of a brief deck for you guys here to kind of walk through, and let me see if I can do some screen sharing live on the air, and we'll hope the technology hangs with us here. While you pull that up, I just wanted to say how nice your beard looks. Thank you, buddy. It's we're, we get we got like an Indian summer here for the winter in Boston, but it's gonna get cold at some point. We know yeah, it. I can see your screen, Jimmy. So you're good. Cool, cool, Chris. Let's start off with the first design principle. It's something you talked about in the conversion code in terms of how consumers sort of perceive design and how important it is. So just talk a little bit about why great design matters from a consumer's perspective. Well, b b because the consumer's looking at your stuff without you there with them, you know, and ultimately design matters more and i'm talking about cold traffic mm -hmm. people that don't know you design matters way more than content and copy like mm -hmm. if you want them to read the words they have to like what they see there was a study done and they were looking for distrust like when you don't trust the website why yeah and 93 percent of the time when they distrusted a website it was the design and the style only seven percent they said oh i don't believe the words Mm -hmm. So design is king if you want the content to be king. Yeah. And, and that's that, where a lot of people fail. Like, they, 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 like it's not impressive. It's not beautiful. Like what, one of the uh, challenges I was given was go to your website and kind of like the other one, would you hire yourself? This one's a little bit, let's say, yes, you would hire yourself. The next test is how much do you think your shit costs? Mm -hmm. Like, like, how, what do you? What would people guess your average price point for your product or service is if they just looked at your site? And a good example of that is go to Tiffany and Company, put, pull up their website. You, you're going to feel your wallet getting heavier while you're there. <laughs> like, that's something I think. What we notice a lot, Jimmy, is the people that have sold 300 homes a year, or the people that are selling the million dollar homes they don't look that much different than the people that just got a free website from their company. Yeah, yeah, it's such, a, it's such an important point. I love that stat you just gave, 93% of consumers trust you, not your website, you, your brand, what you sell based on the design of your website, which goes perfectly into point number two, which is how do we define great design? Now, Google did a study of this. They analyzed over 100,000 websites identifying the characteristics of a great design. Here's what they found. They found there's two things that consumers relate to when it comes to great design. The first is the complexity of the website. How many different choices, how many different options, how many different things can they do on the website when they land there? And as you can imagine, when a site is low in complexity, easy to understand, people inherently think it has a better design. And as Chris just said, better design equals more trust. And we're in the business of trust. The second thing, that Google found out through the study of over 100,000 websites is something called familiarity, which is this basic idea that if you are in the real estate, making your website look and feel similar to what they're already accustomed to doing is a very important factor when it comes to how people judge your design. So low complexity, easy to use, easy to understand, not overloading the consumer with too many graphics, too many images, too much text, too many calls to action. And familiarity, which is the idea of you know, having a basic structure that emulates what people are already accustomed to. So as an example, Chris, if you're on a mobile device, mm -hmm. you know, we have the temptation in design to like add some type of new fancy widget to sort of show what a menu can do. Mm -hmm. But everyone's used to what, Chris, on mobile? The hamburger? That's it. You know, the, so that's a kind of an example of that. So, Chris, you just mentioned Tiffany's here for a second. Mm -hmm. What are the, you know, what are the things that like sites like Tiffany's? What are they like? What's in their toolbox? So you say like it, it looks yeah. and feels like an expensive website. Like why? Well, part of it, you mentioned it. I, I wanted to ask the audience on Facebook. Let us know right now. Two two quick questions. What is the name of the font you're using on your website? 
if you don't know, just say, I don't know the font name. Number two, I want to know how many of you guys know what a hex code is. Do you know the hex code of the color of your brand? That's what Jimmy's talking about here, fonts. Like there are certain fonts that sort of exude luxury. There are certain fonts that a little bit more so exude lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Certain fonts that look a little techy. Like Jimmy, I don't know if you can hop out of the deck, but like pull, pull up pull up your wife's website if, if you don't mind. This is a, a, a boutique yoga studio in Boston. So show that for a second, Jimmy. You have to take over for it to pull up big on the screen. Gotcha. Okay. But, yeah. yeah, just you just have to talk through it. But talk through a couple of the pages so they can see the fonts and the colors. Yeah, you know, what, what we decided to use here, I believe, was like a Meriwether font. And what you can notice is, again, they, 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 they're, they're, a, they're a yoga studio that is about love and about lifestyle. So using a traditional, you know, Roboto font or using something, maybe like even a serif, it would feel too professional, too corporate. So as you can see here, one of the things that we wanted to do is we wanted to be, you know, a little bit whimsical, a little bit more uh, appealing to, let's say, a feminine brand, which is their brand. And, you know, everything from the color, as Chris was just talking about, everything from the colors, the fonts, the language that we that they are using on their website really reinforces what their brand really stands for. If you were to, and a good example of this, if you go to like, uh, you have the ability, Chris, to some applications, some Chrome add-ons, you can sort of download a, an extension that can change the font of a website. Mm -hmm. And you can just sort of see what it looks like. And a really interesting one, if you go to like, let's say marines.com, right? United States Marine Corps, and you go to the website and they have a traditional font, you know, a traditional sort of serif, it's very professional. And if you change their website to something like what you see here on Sweet Balance, it all it just changes the entire feel of the website. So one thing that jumps out to me is you were just sort of highlighting that, Chris, is that in the toolbox for designers, you have things like fonts and colors and images and calls to action. And all of these things working well together is really going to sort of emphasize what it is you're trying to convey. So if you're a luxury brand, mm -hmm. you have to be conscious of that piece of it. No, I love that, Chris. Cool. Well, let's keep rapid firing through these principles. And then we're going to get into 12 examples across 12 different websites that we think are ideas worth copying. By the way, I, Jimmy, I, Jim, I don't know if the audience noticed it, but uh, on your on the website, was that high yoga? Were they doing high yoga? <laughs> I don't think so. I hope not. <laughs> <laughs> if you guys go back, I think it was more of this. She's been spending a lot of time at the studio. I don't know. She gets, she gets, she's got to answer the questions. <laughs> she comes all hungry. <laughs> <laughs> so number three here, Chris, I want you to talk a little bit about this because you know this is a good example, Chris, of of the fact that in design there are sort of conventional principles that oftentimes get disproven as technology evolves. Right now, 66% of all the time on the web is spent below the fold. What's a common mistake you think people make when you think about above the fold and below the fold in sort of 2018? Well, I think a lot of people watching don't even know what that means. Mm -hmm. It's basically the point where you have to scroll or not. It's a, it's a tough thing, Jimmy. You want to be able to convey everything you do and what you are above the fold. Because even if 66% of people get below the fold, 100% of people get above the fold. Mm -hmm. So I'm really concerned with what they land on. That's another good thing you can do to your website. Don't go click around and scroll through your website. Go click around and don't scroll through your website. Like what if you could only see the pages without scrolling down? Because unfortunately, 36% of people, that's what they're going to do. Yeah. They're only going to see above the fold. This gets into one of my ideologies, Jimmy, that I teach, which is you have to optimize for the skimmer and the shopper, right? The above the fold is really for the skimmer. Mm -hmm. And we can start getting into the shopper below the fold and on some of the sub pages. But the, there, there is a fold. There is, there is a fold on a phone. And there is a fold. And, and that came from the newspapers, by the way. Like if, you're, if you got an article in the paper, you, you were hoping it was above the fold because that's the one that sits up on the newsstand. If your article was below the fold, it wouldn't get as much exposure. So yeah. good ideology for people to think about. What's the next one? Yeah, sure. Next one is what just sort of reinforces what you just said, which is people skim, they don't read. Mm -hmm. and, and and so knowing that, Chris, knowing that the percentage of people, the percentage of words that people are going to read on a page dramatically reduces 
the, with the more amount of words there are. What's your pro tip around this? Sort of leaning into the fact that you, you're not going to get someone to read a thousand, you know, word blog post or sales page. So how do you sort of make sure the points are being conveyed in a way that actually helps you still sell if they're not going to read the whole thing? Yeah, I think of it like a movie poster versus mm -hmm. like a description of a movie. So if you go and look at like the poster for a movie, they're, they're going to use words like mesmerizing, five stars, right? They're going to use simple like tweet length descriptions of the film. Mm -hmm. And then if those little short descriptions are actually really interesting, then I might flip the DVD over, right? And read the back. Yeah. So think of it as- You're aging program. yourself right now, by the way. Yeah, well, listen. <laughs> I got DVDs around here somewhere, but it's kind of like this, Jimmy, right? Like we like here's my book. So we would never put a really long description like that, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? On the on the front of the book. Yeah. You know what I mean? The front of the book is like capture leads, create appointments, close sales. So this is what most people really want to see as the skimmer. And then if they like it, boom. There's no different on a website, Jimmy. This is above the fold. This is below the fold. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love that. Cool. All right, last one here for you before we get into the 12 websites worth copying. Again, we're going to be covering the best home about reviews and sales pages. Chris, I want you to talk for a moment about sort of what I refer to as book ending the website because a lot of people, they sort of cut themselves short. And the way I would describe this, Chris, is like the same way that, um, you know, when you end a sales call, people say, what, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Are you ready to do this, mm -hmm. right? I think people sort of do the equivalent of that on a website. Talk to me a little bit about the importance of actually bookending your website or a web well, page. Yeah, there's there's number one, like, I don't know, you guys let me know. When you get lost on a website and you can't find something, to Jimmy's point, I scroll to the bottom. Because I know usually they've got the site navigation in the footer and mm -hmm. they usually have the contact information in there too. So like, don't let your footer be an afterthought. But I think what Jimmy's getting at is when, when if you got to the end of a sales pitch, you would close. If you get to the end of a sales page, you should close. You know what I mean, Jimmy? Like, yeah. like if I'm at the bottom of your homepage and there's no nothing else, that bottom widget needs to be a call to action to go to a different page to subscribe to never miss an alert. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, yeah. so the, 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 the last thing above the footer plus the footer are really important and definitely people don't think about them enough. Yeah, I, lo I love that, guys. And, and what we're saying here, something a curator we coach is at the end of the page, you want them to do one or two, thi one or two things, click or convert. That's mm -hmm. it. So keeping that in the back of your mind, you can start to look at these individual pages on your website and say, a am I just sort of dropping off a cliff here or am I getting them to click or convert? So we just well, covered Jimmy, some Before you move on, I want to yeah. talk to that graphic because I, I teach audiences, right? We teach funnels. John mm -hmm. and I are always working on funnels. So at the top is the magic million. In the middle is the chunky middle. At yeah. the bottom is the sweet spot. So like the magic million, the top part of your sales funnel is wider, but the leads aren't as good. Yeah. And then it gets better and better. So if I look at your graphic, Jimmy, it kind of is like 22% of people make it to the bottom. Yeah. Those are the 22% that are the most likely to buy. Yeah. Those are the 22% that are the most likely to become a customer, not the 100% that never scrolled. So it's weird to optimize the bottom, but those are the people ready to buy or else they wouldn't be at the bottom. They would yeah. have bounced already. It's a really interesting observation. And we're going to, we're going to get into some of the actual live website designs, but what you maybe think about there, Chris was, uh, you know, if you had a form at the top of the page and you had a form at the bottom of the page and between those two forms, you had a bunch of content and explain what it is you did and how it worked. It feels like the bottom of the page, uh, leads would be a much higher quality than the ones that simply just sort of plug something in because you had some clever copy. It's a really interesting point. Guys, this is going to be fun today because what Chris and I are going to be doing, Chris hasn't seen, I'm going to jump back to my my face here for a second if I can. Mm -hmm. um, I want to set up set the stage here for a second. So Chris hasn't actually seen any of the web pages that I actually chose here for today's call. I'm going to get his sort of initial gut reaction. He's going, to, he's going to tell you what he likes about these pages, what he would do differently. And we're going to identify some really kind of key takeaways that we think you guys can apply to each and every one of these pages. So as we get into this, I want you guys to sort of get ready to take some notes here because we're going to walk away with a bunch of takeaways. And more specifically, as we're walking through this, I want you to kind of reference and look at your own website. 
Because I think that's probably the best way to kind of go back and contrast what well, we're Jimmy, doing. Jimmy, real quick, we, there, there's going to be so many takeaways and website examples that people are not going to be able to keep up with them all. They're, even if they're taking notes, they're going to get behind. Mm -hmm. So I am. I want everybody to go to curator.com slash connect. Jimmy, if you could pull that up on your side. Sure. If you go to curator.com slash connect and put in your email, we will send you all the websites and we'll send you the full replay of this webinar. Cool. Love it. All right, Chris, let's get right into it. We're going to cover uh, the three homepages we chose today. The first one is a topic you and I know a lot about, which is women's fashion. This is a site called Rent the Runway. Now, I, I don't even know if you've ever even been to this website. I'm assuming you haven't. So the first question is, is that your initial gut reaction, what, this, what does this company actually do? Well, my initial gut reaction is that homepage videos are overused. Mm hmm and that you have to show restraint when you use them. So like, I like that you can do homepage videos. Our websites can do them too. And we use them in certain places. But my first honest reaction is that I'm getting dizzy. Yeah. Is that fair? <laughs> yeah. It's, it, it, well, you know, it's, it, it's really interesting to hear, to hear you say that. And I think that <clears throat> what's, 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 what you just said there about vid homepage videos is that there are practical homepage videos that serve a purpose, that do a product demonstration, that uh, you know are, you somehow visualize what it is you're going to get, mm -hmm. and their and their product or their, their videos that basically kind of convey a lifestyle, if you will. So, so Jimmy, woman, real quick, pull up the parrotgroup.com. I'll show people the difference between like using video with restraint. You have to say something for it to show the audience. Oh, there we go. I gotcha. I'll, I'll, I'll get, I'll get, I'll get that. There we go. That's cool. a video too, that. Jimmy. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's like that's just the fire flickering. So just keep in mind that you can use a crazy fast moving video. Yeah. But it may not be the best choice. Go, go back for a second to the other site. There's one other thing. A lot of times people spend weeks of their lives trying to come up with a slogan. And then they wake up at four in the morning and they nail it. Mm -hmm. I believe the slogan on that homepage that is worth paying an ad agency for is the one that says, I have nothing, cross out everything to wear. Yeah. Like, I, I know that that's a problem for a lot of women and men. I watch my wife change four times and I hear her complain about not having anything to wear when meanwhile, there's obviously a bunch of clothes there. So like, I actually think that their sub headline should be their main headline. That was my first instinct. Yeah, that's great. What do you think about the call to action here in the top right hand part of the page? I think that that gets lost. Okay. So if I'm going to make something, if I want people to really see that coupon code, yep. That's where colors like red or green or orange can really be powerful, Jimmy, because yeah. it doesn't, it's like, if you're going to try to make something stand out, make it stand out. Yeah. You know yeah. That's I mean? a, it that's doesn't a, stand out. Yeah. That's such a great point here. And uh, Adobe has this tool called, it's like their color tool. I believe it's colored out Adobe. If you have a prominent and like, look, take and go back, go back to run to the runway here for one second. So their color is sort of this like goldish brown color they have right now. And as Chris just said, like he doesn't even see that. It gets lost. And if you're going to use color effectively, you know, you're going to read studies that say, oh, use a big bright orange. Well, if that conflicts with this kind of golden brown you have, it's going to look bad. You could use Adobe's color tools, color.adobe.com. You can enter in your hex code, which is what Chris just mentioned, and it'll give you, you know, some basic complementary colors colors with different shades that can help you emphasize a call to action so it actually does what it's supposed to do, which is stand out. Yeah, Jimmy, last thing on this one. See where it says get started? See how the main, there's one, one, one primary call to action, get started. Mm -hmm. The odds of somebody being on your homepage and being ready to get started, I think is low for that company. Yep. So I would have had, if you look at the top, it says get started. It also says browse now. Yep. I would have given people both choices with the buttons. I would have actually done browse now as the first button yep. because that's what most likely people want. And then I would have done get started because that's what I want.
Yeah, I love that. So guys, this, just to recap some quick takeaways here, we're gonna do rapid fire style, but first using contrast. If you're gonna have a call to action, like Chris said, you know, the top header, have some real contrast so it actually stands out. He'd even notice that. The second thing is, you know, finding that headline that really pops can sometimes be that sub headline. It's kind of a crazy thing. The headline, we try to be cute and clever with it, but oftentimes the sub headline, we feel the need to sort of speak plainly. What you find is sometimes the sub headline is actually a much better headline. And as you mentioned, people want to date before they get married. If the option is schedule a call right now, they might not want to do that. They not, might not want to get started. So give them that secondary option of learn more, browse now, check this out, and then you can have that sort of turn the corner, get started. Chris, let's go on to number two here. This is a company that sells customized furniture. I want you to sort of, I'm going to scroll through this page just to give you sort of an initial overview. I want, to tell, I want you to tell me what you like about this and then sort of what you would do differently. So starting from the top. Well, I would hope the audience is already seeing that their video is much slower. Mm -hmm. It's a lot more patient than the last video. Um, but you got to pull it up, Jimmy. Talk, talk to me. Like, what is this business? I, yep, I sure. So this is this is this is a, uh, a they build handcrafted furniture for a unique space. So basically, do custom furniture. As you can see here, they're trying to disrupt the typical furniture process, which is basically you buy pre-designed sizes that fit mm -hmm. you know, all pr a prefabbed home, if you will. They're based in Kansas City and they're based in Dallas. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it gives me the feeling, and this may, may or may not be true, but it kind of gives me the feeling, Chris, like it's sort of a family-run business. So yeah, I think that's where colors and fonts and some of that stuff matter. My, my The thing I like the most about this website, Jimmy, mm -hmm. is that what they're doing a great job of is they're going to make sure that anybody that comes here for any length of time knows what they do. Like, can, can you read that headline to me? Yep. Handcrafted furniture for a unique space. Like there's no uh, unclear message there. Mm -hmm. They do handcrafted furniture for unique spaces. So I, I'm always a big fan of that. Just, ultimate clarity sometimes people try to get cute yeah right like uh, I'll, I'll give an example one of one of my favorite clients is callie dalton yeah okay? and callie dalton has a great slogan uh called discover the dalton difference mm -hmm. right? which is you know she loves that slogan and she uses it all the time well that probably shouldn't be the big headline because the people that go there that don't really know Cali, that's not compelling for them. Like yeah. the, the, the main headline should probably be find a home or sell yours in Roanoke. You know what I'm saying? Like, so sometimes I think with the main headline, we get tempted to put a slogan and I'm just a bigger fan. Like go to our website real quick. Like we didn't say like, you know, we're going to help blow up your business. Look what our head, read our headline, Jimmy. Yep. Sell more homes with smarter marketing. So we didn't say like, we're the coolest guys in real estate. We didn't say, uh, you know, you, we're going to help you double your business and dominate your market. Like, I think it's important for the headline to be descriptive. And I think that furniture website did a good job of that. Yeah. Let me just point out one more thing here they did well. I think this is an opportunity for everyone who has a homepage, which is we're seeing this trend, Chris, where homepages are now becoming less of a uh, jumping off point and more of a sales page. You know, if you look at your Google Analytics, chances are there are four pages that get the most amount of traffic, your home, your about, your reviews, and your sales page. Why isn't your homepage more like a sales page is sort of a, a question you need to ask yourself. And what they do a really good job of here, and I'm starting to see this trend, is they sort of explain the process using visuals, right? Come to the showroom, customize it, and oh yeah, by the way, we have a great warranty. They incorporate, you know, testimonials. So Chris, like this is starting to feel and look like a, you know, something that could easily double as a sales page. Yeah, is this that's what, well, we talked about that in our prep. Your home page is basically a showcase mm -hmm. of all of your other money pages. Yeah. So you should have testimonials. You should have a sales page. You should have a contact page. You should have an about page and you should probably have a blog, right? So your home page is basically a preview of all of your other pages. But yeah. I, I, li I like that concept, Jimmy, because the way people use the internet is a lot of times you're bringing people in through a blog post or a listing or what you would call a sub page. But the most natural thing to do 
is then to click to the home page next. Yeah. So yeah. if you want kind of uh, you, you want your home page to earn its keep, turn it into a sales page. The other thing I would say, Jimmy, is home pages are a page that it's a little more natural to scroll. Mm -hmm. Like it's just normally there's just a bunch of stuff on a home page. Yeah, the home page is a sales page. Great takeaway. Love that. Cool. All right, so let's get into uh, one of our clients, Richard McDonough, and, and I want you to kind of walk through. And again, this is we're going to sort of be be critical of our own stuff as well. But I want you to first talk about what you like about Richard's home page, and then maybe what you would do differently based on what you see here. Yeah, yeah. I, the first thing I would I would suggest would be go go back again, Jimmy, and what's yep. read read his headline for him. Yeah, you deserve the best. The best well, what bike? Mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. You deserve the best what? Like that, that should say home buying or selling experience. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like if I go to the subheadline, it's in there. R read the subheadline. Yeah. We'll meet your real estate needs through knowledge, innovative marketing, exceptional negotiation, unfailing focus, and community driven passion. Yeah. I like it. I just think that that, that main headline has to be a little bit more descriptive. Yeah. The other thing I'd like to see a little bit more of on Richard's website is Richard. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I I feel like above the fold, whether it's parts of that video or or whether it's even like cutting to a picture that kind of pans and zooms, mm -hmm. you know, Richard just started a new brand on the back of his personal brand. His name is Richard McDonough. His new brand is Room, R-M, right, is yep. short for Room. So... I know he's trying to grow his own brokerage and, and, but the people that are going to grow that out of the gates are the people that already know and like Richard. Yeah. So I think Richard should be somewhere above that. Fold. As, as a quick question here, as a side now, what, what is your personal, uh, you know, what's your advice or your personal belief around the idea of, you know, at curator, obviously we have our brand, but then there's the Chris Smith brand and there's the Jimmy Mackin brand and the Chris and Jimmy brand. Like, how does one decide which to sort of invest in? Do you even try to sort of decouple them? Do you say, you know what, like if Chris Smith is working and Chris Smith is sort of synonymous with uh, with curator, then we just lean into that. Because I think people struggle with that internally, Chris, when thinking about branding, you know, how much do they want to really be front and center, especially in real estate? Well, I think they should want to be front and center, Jimmy. Every realtor listening right now would say that people don't hire their company, they hire them. Mm-hmm. So oh, that's my answer. If they hire you and a lot of your business's referrals because of how great you are, then some of the shit should be you. Like I listen to our sales calls. They say, man, I love Chris and Jimmy. I love the water cooler. I love Chris's book, The Conversion Code. I love what Chris is doing with this podcast. I love what Chris is doing on Instagram. Like when you hear that people are buying because of you or when you know that, lean into it. Don't be afraid of it. Yeah, I, yeah. I think what happened, Jimmy, is, and this is a big topic for another day, but all of real estate used to be personal branding. But then when the internet came out, the way that realtors did personal branding on social was annoying and cheesy and old school. Mm -hmm. So what happened is everybody started doing stealth branding. Yeah, They started showing off the community and the listings, and they started trying to hide themselves. Like, I was one of the people saying, why would you want to have a big picture of yourself above the fold? I used to say that. Well, now I know it's because people actually buy shit because of you. Yeah. And so I think that there's going to be a renaissance in real estate personal branding where it's actually done right and it's done classy and it's done in a way that attracts consumers. It doesn't repel them. Yeah, love that. One last, one last kind of pro tip here. You can see that Richard is doing exactly what we talked about, which is he's bookending his website with a call to action before he gets into the footer here. Again, most people sort of make that mistake of actually just sort of ending the website without any additional call to action. You want them to click or convert. But to Chris's point, you know, there's a flow to this page. There is, you know, he might can, and he could probably benefit from including him, himself in the video a little, more, a little bit more. He can benefit from maybe a more plain spoken headline. But as you start to scroll down, you know, he speaks to the different types of people he's working with, the buyer experience, the seller experience, the team, you know, again, he goes into the neighborhoods, the area he focuses on. So some real personalization there. But if you land on one of Richard's listings, as an example from a Facebook ad, your natural reaction is to go to the homepage. 
And what Richard's trying to do in the homepage is not only kind of talk about what it, what it is he does and how it works, but he's trying to, you know, kind of create more roadways and bridges to other key pages on his website to get you to read more. So he does a really I mean, good job. We, I don't, we don't even always follow our own advice. Like go to curator, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know, Richard, you're not alone. We screwed up too. So we decided we didn't want me and Jimmy above the fold. But if you scroll down, Jimmy, on the homepage, talk us through it. Yep. And you can see here as we get down to this sort of section. So you and I are like three fourths of the way down the page here where there's the, you know, our content marketing play here where we highlight Chris, we highlight Chris and we have a, you know, Chris and Jimmy sandwich here. Three to one ratio. People yeah, <laughs> that sounds, sounds about right. So, yeah, but this is a good example. Like, you know, it, we could theoretically and we did this a lot, Chris, back in the well, day. My, my request was I wanted to be the I wanted me and you to be the first widget when they started to scroll. But our mm -hmm. team, sometimes our team works so hard on this stuff that I don't even ask them to change it later. But the yeah. point is we are on the home page in a beautiful way. We're not hiding ourselves on just the about page. Yeah, and let me give you guys one last pro tip here before I move on to about pages. And Chris, actually, before I give that pro tip, people are actually asking the chat right now, they wanted to know where they can get access to the notes, the ideas. I know we, it was at curator.com slash connect. Yeah, you can go to curator.com slash connect. But the other thing that we're doing tomorrow, Jimmy, is we're going to do a one hour webinar where we're going to actually walk through our new website platform. So mm -hmm. whether it's curator.com or Richard's site, we'll show a couple more throughout the class today. But if you would like to learn about what we sell, if you want us to build your website for you, run your Facebook ads for you, write your blog posts and send your emails for you. That's what we do at Curator. And so a lot of times people get all fired up and they definitely want a better website and they want a lot of great content, but then they don't have the time or knowledge to go do it. So I want everybody to go to curator.com slash webinar. Curator.com slash webinar. And Jimmy, can, can you just give them the time and date there for me? Yeah, sure. So it's going to be tomorrow at 1 p.m. EST. You can go to curator.com slash webinar. And, and if you... anybody misses that, you still want to go there because we'll send you the recording and we'll send you an invite to the next live one. But if, if you want to learn about Curator without doing kind of a one-on-one -on -one sales pitch or a one-on-one -on -one call, we do a group demo once or twice a month and we ha actually have one tomorrow. So please go right now curator.com slash webinar. That's if you want to learn about what we sell. If you just want all the stuff we're talking about today, that's curator.com slash connect. Got it. Love it. Thanks. All right. So just real quickly before we move on to about pages, one thing I just wanted you guys to pay attention to is you'll notice that in the graphics, in the images, in the background color, and as you start to scroll down, you notice we use these little accents, if you will. We call these basically, we call them patterns usually. So when you have a lot of white space, which is advantageous, white space is really, really important when it comes to design, you don't want it to feel too bare. So we use accents here in this sort of pattern format as a way to sort of have a nice little touch, if you will, to the website design so it feels cohesive. And we're using you know, our primary color or a complementary color of our primary color. So you'll notice how we just use that kind of throughout the entire website without it being read everywhere which can be really really overwhelming when you have such a strong color so we, just had, we had a version that was all red and uh white space is underrated <laughs> yeah it is absolutely all right chris let's get into about pages we want to keep this thing rolling here and i want to i want to show you this one that we picked out as one of our favorites uh harry's which sells razors uh high quality razors this is actually their company page and their story page so i'm going to kind of start scrolling through this for you and just tell me as, as i'm scrolling first off what do you like about it and as you start to digest this maybe something you would do differently I love it. I, I love the simplicity of it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of times people don't have the restraint to do just that one big, beautiful picture like that with the with the razor. Yeah. What, what does it say there above the fold, Jimmy? What's the first thing say? Yeah, we created Harry's to be a different to be different from other shaving companies. Yeah. And then it goes into it. it's all for men, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. They embrace the messiness of masculinity. Mm -hmm. Meet Jeff and Andy. Now, let me ask a question here on this one. You notice that they actually, are, you know, typically when there's an about page or a company page, which we'll show you here in a second, mm -hmm. this is usually at the very top. Meet Jeff and Andy. 
you know, the guys who basically created this razor company. Mm -hmm. But you notice they're actually starting with sort of the like the mission or the value proposition a little bit here. What, what's your sort of initial reaction to that? I think that people, well, a lot of it is if you're a personal brand, they're probably looking for the person. Mm -hmm. But if you're branding a business, if as an example, if it was North Group, yep. uh, I would probably want to see the whole team and then another blurb about Amy as the founder. Yeah. So I think that for a company like Harry's, uh, that's a national company, it's e-commerce, it's low dollar shaving needs. Uh, you're never going to meet anybody that works there. I think in that scenario, I'd probably start with the company bio yeah, and then the founder bio. I think if you're more of a local mom and pop, a local business, a local realtor, I'd probably reverse it and start with me and then go into the company. Yeah. And there's actually a stat done by, um, and this, this topic around with the first thing you reacted to this, Chris, was you love the restraint was the word you used, mm -hmm. the restraint of the website. BuzzSumo did a study on this. They say that the average social shares will increase by 200% if you can include an image for every 75 to 100 words. So what they're basically saying is the, the more balanced the image to text ratio, the more likely it is people will share your stuff. Yeah, and those next two widgets are perfect examples of ideas mm -hmm. worth copying. Yeah. Because it's very simple technique. You go, you know, words on the left, picture on the right. Words on the right, picture on the left. It looks great, and that that's a pretty simple design anybody can rip off. Yeah, I love that, cool. And again, one, as you guys can see, they're bookending the website with a call to action. Don't miss that opportunity. Let's go into Spyglass Spy Realty, one of our clients out of Austin, Texas, our man Ryan and his team, Spyglass Realty and Investments. And this kind of feeds right into your original point here, Chris, as I start to scroll down this website. It starts with, this is a personal brand, if you will, or company brand. It starts with a big picture of his team versus sort of that our story. Yeah. And then you can start to see it gets into that uh, you know, the, the founder's bios here and the rest of the team. I'm going to keep scrolling here for a second so you can see the whole page. Well, this is why real estate teams are dominating mm -hmm. because who, who wouldn't want a group of that many people working with them? You know what I mean? Versus like the lady down the street that's kind of solopreneur in it. Yeah, I mean, what, what? It's tough. That's a big part of their value. So I think it's, it's the big team up top that helps do that. Mm -hmm you're just scrolling it's like man they got a client care person they got a per, another they got a mark like you know what i mean yeah a stager they got a you know uh assistants associates right yeah i gotcha yeah, now no, you can I will see say he's a boutique brokerage right so yeah. this isn't like a big team but he, the thing i like the most about this about page is is again it's an ideology people can copy mm -hmm. every page can look as good as the home page when when i see that page jimmy if that was its own domain, if it was like, if that became the homepage tomorrow, it would do just as good a job almost as the actual homepage. Yeah. So for whatever reason, it feels like people put, you know, call it months of their life into the homepage and then hours of their life into the sub pages. And, yeah. and what I love about Ryan's about page is he has a home page quality about page. Yeah, it's a great takeaway. And you can see again, he books and he bookends it with, you know, linking over to a success story here where they can watch a full video. This is, you know, my only critique here, Chris, is using a stock image. And I obviously prefer authentic images of clients versus using a stock image. But I realized that probably wasn't available at the time. Yeah, but they look kind of Austin-y. They do, right, with the flannel. Yeah, yeah they, they sort of do. Where the sneakers and the flannel, they look like yeah. they came back from like Austin City Limits. Some couples getting, are just that happy. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> so, but this is a good example, though, like Chris, of, of, of you mentioned, you know, you talked about this earlier, linking your homepage to your about page, linking your about page to your to a reviews page as an example. Um, is, is, there a, is there a particular formula you look for when it comes to sort of interconnecting these money pages? Yeah, I try to think of it like a champagne tower. You mm -hmm. know, the homepage is the top glass. So it kind of has to link to all the other glasses. Yep. And then the glasses below that should all link to each other. So if I got a home page, that's going to go to about sales, testimonials, and contact. If I've got an about page, that's going to go to uh, home, sales, testimonials, and contact. On testimonials, I'm going to go to sales, about, and contact. On, on you know, you see what I'm saying, Jimmy? On the yeah. sales page, I'm going to go to reviews page. Like, yeah, yeah. I'm basically am identifying what are my money pages 
And how can I make sure they all connect to each other so people can just get lost on my website kind of the way they would in a Vegas casino? Yeah, love that. All right, cool. Let's go on to another company called Yesware. This is a company that basically sells a email you know, marketing services, right? They help people with, you know, um, tracking emails and Gmail and a whole bunch of other things. If I'm pulled up their company page mm -hmm. and you can see here, this is helping salespeople sell smarter. That's their, ta their tagline. Now, I want you to react to one thing in particular. Guys, you're starting to notice, you know, we mentioned at the beginning of today's call, Google defines great design as being familiar. So what we're showing you is a lot of sites that have, that have a familiar cadence and a familiar structure to each other. But yes, we're doing something unique here, Chris, which is they, they go one step further and they include two things. First, their core values. Second, they include job openings. And then they also include, and this is a third thing here, they also include sort of a timeline of their history. So I want you to talk for just one moment about the idea of including those elements in your about page, your core values, your, your you know, careers, if you will, and then a timeline of your history. Do you find that, do you find that valuable? Is that something you recommend doing if you have a long, interesting history that people would want to learn about? I love it. The other thing is you can always play offense with your website, right? You can run ads to the timeline. You could take the timeline of your experience and put that into your listing presentation mm -hmm. and, ju and just pull your website up and walk people through it. You know, Hey, I want to show you a little bit about my career in real estate. So I'm actually, I, I don't have a lot of critiques for this site, J this page. I will give one critique. When I'm looking to hire a software company, or when I'm looking to sign up for like a, a startup, like a product that I find on Product Hunt, Jimmy, mm -hmm. one of my concerns is that it's not like we were five years ago, like two dudes in a garage. So I think Yesware is missing a huge opportunity on that company page by, by not making that primary picture their whole company standing together. Yeah. Yeah. I think that picture is awful. It's dark. It's dreary and it's ruining an otherwise perfect page. And I think I can pull one up real quickly for you. I think MailChimp does this really, really well. And I'll see if I can grab it for us here. Um, when we talk about, look at, guys, look what I'm doing right now. As Chris just said earlier, I'm going right to the bottom of the page because I'm looking for their about page. And you, and this is a perfect example here, Chris. Perfect. This is this is probably, I don't know, one tenth yeah. of you know MailChimp's team. But to Chris's point, this, this, is, this is what he's referring to here, guys. This, or this, which one jumps out at you more? Mailchimp, baby. That's it, man. I love that. Cool. All right, let's keep it rolling here, Chris. Chris, we got about 15 minutes left here. We have six pages to cover about and sales. What do you think about just doing maybe one or two about and then ending with sales here just to make sure we don't run out of time? Because I know yeah. sales is really important. No, I think we've covered a bunch of great about pages. I think people kind of get the point. I, I, I would say we could do one more about page and then get into the sales pages to wrap it up. Cool. All right. So let's go over. This is an example of, you know, this is sort of in line. This is reviews. We said we wanted to cover a reviews page here for you guys. And I have Gusto, which is a payment, uh, a payroll company, if you will. They handle, handle benefits, they handle payroll, they handle a bunch of other HR activity. And Chris, unlike most companies, what Gusto has done here mm -hmm. is they didn't just put a, a bunch of reviews in sort of a, uh, you know, a list view or a grid view. They have sort of a different style here. So just react to this if you could in terms of what jumps out at you. What do you like about this? This is a reviews page. And uh, you know, what do you think people can take away from it? Yeah, I think what you're trying to do with testimonials is like the point of a testimonial or a case study or, or a review is so that somebody that you haven't worked with yet can, can self-identify that you could help them too. So like as an example, Jimmy, you mentioned before, like if you saw an article that said, uh, grow your small business faster with this Facebook trick. Mm -hmm. You might click it. But if you saw an article that said how to go from 20 million to 50 million in sales in your fifth to seventh year, yeah, you would click it in a second because that's what we're trying to do exactly. So I love the idea of specific blog posts and articles that kind of tell the story of a past client. Yeah. But then I like clearly identifying those in the buckets that future clients would understand. Oh, you're a small team that wants to be a big team. Read this. Oh, you're a solo agent that wants a team. Read this. Oh, you're a big team that wants to open your own brokerage. Read this. Oh, you're a big team with a big brokerage that wants to open up in other locations. 
read this. Yeah. Think how much more compelling that is than read our reviews. Yeah, I love that specificity is something really important, Chris, you're touching on here, which is, you know, when you have a review, giving it a title is what we're really saying here. You can go deeper and create stories, which we're huge fans of. But, you know, did you fail to sell your home? Question mark. Read a story of a client who was just like you. You know, are you looking to buy a luxury home for the first time ever? You know, are you looking to make, you know, purchase your first investment property? Every single one of you works with clients who have different characteristics, but, you know, are sort of shared common, uh, common goals as future customers. And by grouping them in logical buckets, your reviews become that much more compelling. Chris, let me give you a stat on this. The average consumer, 85% of them read 10 or more reviews before reaching out to a service provider. Where do you think the opportunity is here for a company like Gusto or a company like a real estate company to sort of use third party validation on a reviews page? Because I'm not seeing that here. I'm seeing all their stories, but where's the third party validation and how, how can we incorporate that piece? Yeah, the third party validation would be taking the reviews from Zillow, from Facebook, and, and basically getting those logos on your site. Mm -hmm. So if you've got a bunch of five-star reviews on Yelp, if you've got a bunch of five-star reviews on Zillow, people trust Yelp and Zillow, whether they should or not. That's a whole different call, but they do. And basically, it's kind of like I, the way I said it in my book, Jimmy, is like this. that's kind of like the new Better Business Bureau. You know what I mean? Like people used to be like, we're Better Business Bureau approved. Like that's old school now. So mm -hmm. to me, the Zillow icon, the Facebook icon, the Yelp icon, if there are positive social media status updates people have done about you, sometimes a screenshot of those yeah. can be way more compelling. And I, I think you have an example there of that. Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's you just, um, I'm actually, I didn't even scroll this far down the page. Uh, it's actually a really interesting way of, of, of framing it. Getting, a, getting your client to give you a validation through Facebook, having them post on their Facebook wall or on, on your wall as an example or your profile or posting something on Instagram and then screenshotting that Instagram post or embedding that Instagram post on your website. It, for whatever reason, I, there's obviously, I'm sure, some science behind this, but like the fact that it was posted on another website like Instagram or Facebook or Zillow, it just gives the review that much more credibility than just plain text as an example. Yeah, so I, just, mean, I, I would actually take a screenshot of that and I would go to all my best clients and say, hey, can you do a status update on Facebook saying how great I am? Because I need to screenshot it for my website. Yeah, yeah. It, it just it just gives you you know it, you know I know social media right now is sort of under under the gun right now with some of the credibility issues, but it it, you, it does it just gives you more credibility seeing a post on Facebook someone's willing to publicly share out there. By the way, Jimmy, for the people that have never had ten positive reviews, get better at your job. Yeah, like, I know a lot of people are thinking, how am I going to get ten? Well, between social media, Zillow, Yelp, you know, e sometimes people email you a real nice compliment, Jimmy. Mm -hmm. What do we do when they do that? We go right back and say, "Hey, we're going to use this on our website. Thank you so much." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We do, we we're, we're relentless when it comes yeah. to stuff, you know. Yeah. Absolutely cool. So just I'll recap the takeaways here, and we'll cover two additional sales pages with the remaining time we have. But mm -hmm. just when you think about your reviews pages, Chris just said use specificity, highlight specific goals people are trying to accomplish in the reviews incorporate some type of third party validation. And if you have the ability to get your customers to share their stories through social screenshot that embed that on the website, highlight it. It just gives that much more credibility when people actually land on these pages. Chris, let's get into sales pages. This is your favorite topic here. And we're going to start with a company that we admire, a company we use, a company we featured many, many times on previous episodes of the water cool. You probably mentioned on calls with Chris as well, which is Slack. Now, this is Slack's sales page. Now, to set the stage here for you guys, Slack does, Chris, I don't know, a couple hundred things. They have a couple hundred integrations, right? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to start scrolling here, and I want you to sort of react to what you're seeing, and I want you to sort of tell me what you like, and again, anything you might do differently here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, here's the thing, Jimmy. The thing I like that they did is even though the widgets are separate, they connected them. Mm -hmm. And even though they have a lot of information, if you only read the headlines, you feel like you know what they do. If you only skim, right? So, so do me a favor. So forget forget above the fold even. Mm -hmm. 
Just just read me the read me four headlines in a row from those widgets. It simplifies communication. It helps everyone find the answers they need. It streamlines your workflows. That's it. Like these companies have billion dollar budgets for ad agencies that spend months to come up with those three sentences. Yeah. I think crazy. people forget that sometimes. Yeah. It's but but you're what you what you just, what you said there was actually really profound. I, I want people to make sure they actually hear this again. If if someone was were to only read the headlines of your sales page, would it actually make sense? It simplifies communication, it helps you find answers you need. It streamlines your workflow. Well, Jimmy, go to our sales page. Fuck it. Let's try it. Let's see if we have <laughs> curator.com slash help. Yeah. Curator brain takes out the guesswork. Our websites allow you to wow customers. Our Facebook ads connect you with more customers. We give you the power to email the right people with the right message. It's close. It's right? close. Yeah, I'm, not, yeah. I'm not embarrassed. It's close. Yeah. Well, yeah, we, I, I knew it was. I, I set us up <laughs> to succeed there, but it's something that we, it took us a long, long time mm -hmm. to sort of realize that those three or four sentences are what you start with, and yeah. then you build the rest of the stuff around that. So great, great page by Slack. What was their thing at the bottom, Jimmy? So for the people to get through those three, what was their call to action? Yeah, they had two calls to action. One curious about Slack works with large organizations. So this is a, a call to action to Chris's point earlier in reviews with specificity for enterprise companies. But then they also, for, 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 the, for the common folk here, the rest of us, try it for free, get started. Mm -hmm. And they have basically calls to action for the two different types of companies they service, large enterprise clients, and then sort of the, the small businesses who are just looking to get started right away. Great sales page. What's the next one? Cool. Last one we have here for us is going to be StoryBrand. Mm -hmm. And StoryBrand is a company that provides essentially branding uh, workshops for uh, for individuals. And they've worked really hard on their sales uh, their sales page. It's going to be fun to sort of analyze it here. Uh, but it starts off with the message, clarify your message so people listen. A live workshop to connect with more customers. Breaks down a little bit about what they actually do includes a descriptive video of the of the workshop again this is a work page that sells a workshop mm -hmm. testimonial and then finally pricing yeah so one thing they did there that we can't do a class on websites without mentioning is there are you know think of think of your website as being a hundred percent right jimmy you have a hundred percent of your website Mm -hmm. What happens is some people are ready after 25%. Yeah. Some people are ready after 50%. Some people are ready after 75%. Some people are ready after 100%. So one of the mistakes I do see a lot is people just having all of it and then the one call to action once they're 100% through. Yeah. So I think they did a good job. See how uh, if you scroll through it again, people will probably pick up on it. Go ahead yep. and talk over it. Yep. So you see here, the, you get the the second section. What's your point? There's a call to action to register now. You just have the first section, mm -hmm. right? And then play and then register now again, Jimmy. Yeah. They're repeating that same type of call to action over and over again. Yeah, it's a really good point because, you know, especially if you think about it on mobile here for a second, mm -hmm. you could be looking this entire section here, Chris, on mobile mm -hmm. could take up the entire screen. Yeah, I love yeah, that. So, so calls to action throughout the page, not just at the top or bottom. Yeah. And there are certain points, like if you go back to ours, Jimmy, go back to the curator sales page, just because we spent so much time on it. Uh, I believe we did this as well. No? No. All right. So that's, that's something we need to definitely do. <laughs> so like the idea would be like a lot of times, even, even on a call, think of it this way. When you're on a sales call. Yeah. What are the things that after you talk about people are sold? Mm -hmm. Because if, if on our sales calls, if we show curator brain and we show how people can get hundreds of thousands of Facebook ads and emails that other top producing teams just used with success. Like if I just show you curator brain, you're sold. Yeah. So that should have a call to action on the website to match that same yeah. thing with the websites. If you get a demo of our website tomorrow, you're going to be sold after you just see the websites, but we're going to show you our email tool. 
we're going to show you our sales tool. So think of your sales page, kind of like your sales pitch. What are the parts that when you pitch, sometimes you close right afterwards? Yeah, that's a really it's smart takeaway. Yeah. It, yeah, and I think in, in, what we're saying here, and in, in I think the Zen takeaway is just basically ensuring that there are calls to action throughout the sales page, not just at the top and bottom, mm -hmm. which is something that we're going we're gonna to learn from as well. So we sort of take this critical look at our website as well as obviously existing ones out there. Chris, uh, I know that we have an Instagram kind of giveaway here that I want to wrap up the show and talk and talk about here. But I, I, I saw questions coming in again, guys, if you're looking to get all the notes from today's session, we didn't have a chance to cover the entire 12 websites worth copying, but we do have all the notes, all the examples, all the information you're looking for. You can go to curator.com slash connect, plug in your email address, and you guys will be part of our, our newsletter list and we'll get you out all the websites that we covered today as well as all the additional notes. Chris, why don't you take us home here, buddy, and talk about the Instagram promotion we have for everyone who's tuning in live. Sure, yeah, so pull up Curator on Instagram. What, what we wanted to do is we always really appreciate it when people stay on till the very end, so we always do kind of a bonus at the end. But I have scripts. So basically the idea is this, Jimmy. If you do what we taught today with your website, your website becomes one of your best salespeople. Like your website is warming people up. But that doesn't mean that when you get the lead, you still don't need to get on the phone with them and use a proven framework for the conversation. So I have a script. This was featured in the conversion code. It's a sales script for buyer leads, seller leads, or you can just customize it for any purpose. So if you sell mm -hmm. software, if you sell cars, if you sell loans, if you sell yoga stuff like your wife. So we're gonna give the sales script away for free right now. And here's how you can enter to get that. There's not entering, you're just getting it if you do this. Go to Instagram and you have to follow Curator. So Jimmy, if you want to uh, show, yep. so show you, the account. Yeah, if you go to Instagram.com slash Curator Systems or just search Curator in the search box here. Yeah, so make sure you're following us. Yep. And then I want you to DM us, D send a DM, send a direct message to Curator yep. and just say, hey, I was on the live stream today. Can I please have the free scripts? And our social media manager, Annette, now we get, Jimmy, we get blown up with requests when we do this. So give her a little bit of time. But anybody that goes on Instagram right now, follow Curator Systems, send a DM to Curator and say you were on this webinar and that you want a free script and Annette will reply and get that to you. Uh, no strings attached. You're not entering to win. This is a PDF, two-sided editable that we will send every single person that DMs us on Instagram, whether you're watching live or you're watching the replay later. Yeah, love it. Jimmy, All right, let, me say one, let me say one last thing. Sure, wrap it up, buddy, you good. Tomorrow at 1 p.m. is when we can build your website for you. If you loved all the ideas that you saw today, if you want an expert company to help you with your website, we're gonna be walking through everything we do tomorrow at 1 p.m. Go to curator.com slash webinar to RSVP for that. If you can't make it, we'll send you the replay. We'll also send you the invites to the future live webinars. But Neil the Deal, Jimmy, Neil the Deal's doing mm -hmm. it. Neil, are you here? Can you come out here? Is Neil the Deal here? He's in the back. Sorry. Neil the Deal. He may hear me from way back there, Jimmy, and come <laughs> running out. But ne ne Neil the Real Deal. Here he is. Come on, Neil. Neil's going to come on tomorrow, 1 p.m. He's going to bring the fire. He's going to bring the passion. And he's going to walk everybody through Curator. So curator.com slash webinar. Neil, the real deal is going to be live at 1 p.m. tomorrow. Thank you guys for tuning in. Thanks for keeping up with our business and what we're doing at Curator. Jimmy, it was great to be back on the air with you, my man. Yeah, it, it felt great, guys. Looking forward to, to doing this more often here in the near future, guys. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for tuning in. See you guys. Cheers. Chat with you tomorrow.